Welcome. Let's talk about key points when prepping for an internal jugular central line placement. So the first things we're going to talk about today are lab values. The next thing is the consent and the importance of it. The physical examination. The chest x-ray. And some other tips related to the ultrasound machine. So let's get started. Lab values are a little tricky. It all kind of depends on the acuity of the illness. If uh, the patient's are crashing in front of you, then at that point, labs really shouldn't hold you from doing what's life-saving in that matter. But if you do have time, platelet levels ideally should be above, sorry, 50,000. That's a five. Okay. And however, this for the INR level, there's no real safe cutoff. Now, if it's normal, that's fine. If it's abnormal, I'm not sure whether 2.5 is really much worse than 2.2 or 1.8. So at that point, it will, be, uh, it will pretty much be dictated by the acuity of the illness. If you have any concerns about the, the coagulopathy of the patient, uh, the, the ability to clot, you may want to go for the IJ or the femoral line. You definitely want to avoid the subclavian just because that area may not be as compressible. And don't forget, if you're going for the IJ or the femoral, apply pressure if you do notice any bleed or hematoma. So after labs, you want to get consent. Now the consent is important because you want to make sure that the patient or the family member is aware of all the risk and, and the um, some of the iatrogenic problems that occur. One of it is infection. Next is bleeding. Whether you hit a uh, whether the vein itself bleeds out or you hit an artery. And the third thing, the third most important thing, probably the most important thing is the pneumothorax. So make sure they're aware of all of this, uh, the patient is or the caregiver is as well. The next thing you want to do before putting on gowning up as well is to make sure you remove your pages and cell phones, put in, a, in an area that's safe and accessible to the nursing staff or anyone else assisting you with the procedure. As the last thing you want is a pager going off or a cell phone going off in your pocket and that distracts you from your procedure itself. The next thing is the examination. So the physical examination is important for various reasons. One is you want to examine the patient to see whether there's any sign of any AV graft or anything else that, that impedes or, or may compromise blood flow in that area or even other lines like a permanent cath, a perma cath, a, a dialysis catheter, a port a cath, a chemo, chemo port as well, which may impair the um, the ability to, to uh, thread the guide wire through to the uh, SVC. So you want to examine the patient and looking for any actual signs of um, anything or even evidence of endarterectomy um, in that area of the neck, uh, which may uh, change the anatomy, local anatomy. However, this is not a contraindication. It just may, like I said, alter the normal anatomy. A pick line as well when you examine the patient to see whether there's any sign of that uh, to evaluate that. The other thing you want to do is observe the patient. Now, when I say observe the patient, just look and see how the patient is laying down, whether they're laying down may, mainly with their head tilted to the left or the right, whether they have facial hair, which may cause some problems um, in, uh, in, in, in actually um, in visualization, plus also further down the road in terms of um, infection prevention and so on. So observe the patient, see whether they have an ET tube, if the ET tube is on the right side of the angle of the mouth, or the left side of the angle of the mouth, and see whether that affects... Uh, whether that affects the uh, your your ability to kind of have a, a a more sterile area, so look at the ET tube, look at facial hair as well in these patients, and look at oral secretions because if you see them having drool all over their left side of their neck, you may want to avoid going into the left IJ just because that's going to increase their risk of developing infection of of the um, the central line. So observation is really important. So after you do that, look at the chest X-ray. Observe to see whether there's any lines that you may have missed out on during the examination that may be present. Even the old uh, pacemaker leads are important to take note of as well because you may not be able to thread the guide wire through uh, because the lead placement in that area may impede the uh, flow of the guide wire. So have a look at the chest x-ray. Another thing that you can take note of on the chest x-ray is chest tubes. Now if the patient may have a chest tube on the right side of the chest, then you may want to just attempt the uh, IJ on the right side because the chest tube, even God forbid, there is a... Um, um, a hydrogenic pneumothorax is caused by that the right side of the chest tube will treat the uh, pneumothorax on the same side. So if you do have a chest tube already for when, for whatever reason, whether it's there for a previous pneumothorax or a pleural effusion, go for that side. After you look at the chest x-ray, the next thing is use the ultrasound. Now before you gown up, use the ultrasound to evaluate the uh, the neck veins. Now, uh, excuse my excuse my <laughs> excruciatingly horrible drawing here. 
but just assume this is the uh, right and this is the left side. And you see this two sternocleidomastoid muscles against the clavicles over here. Use the ultrasound machine and evaluate the caliber of the IJ coming down. And you want to track it all the way down from the head of the triangle all the way down to the clavicle. You're looking for any signs of any stenosis, any signs of thrombosis. The next thing you want to look at is the caliber of the vessel as well. Um, if the vessels um, is large, if it's collapsible on inspiration, whether the vein is right next to the artery, whether the artery overlies it, whether the artery is below it. So these kind of things to kind of make you decide whether you want to go on the right side first or whether you want to go on the left side first. The other thing that's going to dictate right and left, um, mainly for me especially since I'm right-handed, is I'd rather go in the right side because that works well with my right hand coming down this way and going a straight shot right into the uh, the right atrium. So those are some of the things that you want to do with the ultrasound machine is to kind of dictate which side of the 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 um, uh, the eye, right IJ or the left IJ that you start off with. Uh, talking about caliber of the vessels as well, if you find the caliber of vessel is small or it can, is completely collapsible, so this is the artery over here and it completely collapses uh, during inspiration, you may want to put the patient in Trendelenburg position, okay, where you put the head down and you kind of engorge the uh, the neck veins. Uh, the other thing you can do as well is uh, is to give them uh, more fluid. So if, the, if you're not in any rush to, to get the line in, you can go ahead and bolus them with fluids to get the, the vessels more engorged and larger so that it makes it easier to get the um, the needle into the uh, into the internal jugular vein and thread the guide wire through. Now, just be cautious about the head down position, especially in patients with raised ICP, trauma patients and so on, um, or even patients with tenuous respiratory uh, status, uh, for example, if they have palmar edema and so on, laying down flat may be extremely uncomfortable for these patients. So just be cautious in that. All right, so... Um, once you're satisfied with that and chosen the side and you think the anatomy is good to go, then good luck and uh, gown up and sterilize the area. So just uh, as a recap, what, I, what we spoke about today is one is labs to evaluate that to see what's ideal and what's appropriate if, if possible. The next thing is getting the consent, making sure you remove your pager and your cell phone and so on right before that and put it in a, in a, in a, in a safe location. You want to observe and examine anything on the body of the patient, but also observe the position of the patient to see what's what's going to work best. Sometimes this patient will, based on their body position, will tell you which, you know, in, indirectly tell you which position will be best, uh, which uh, right side or left side of the IJ to go in. The next thing we want to look at is the chest x-ray we spoke about earlier, then using the ultrasound to look at the vessels itself, see the caliber, and even in looking for any signs of stenosis or any ab abnormal uh, anatomy. All right, good luck. Thank you.